Shalom, brothers, shalom, sisters, Bishop Nathaniel here. You know what day it is. That's right. It is Shout Out Tuesday. It's Shout Out Tuesday. And you know how I love to read your letters of exhortation and your donations of support. But before I do that, I often love to cover a little bit of our hidden history. So sit back, relax yourself. Let's take a look at some history. Get your diet food, get your libations on, and I'll be right back. Africa being an accurate description of the regions of Egypt, Barbary, Libya, and Bildegard, the land of Negroes, Guinea, Ethiopia, and the Abyssinians. Abyssinia, that's Ethiopia. All right. This was published in 1670, 1670. Africa being an accurate description of the regions of Egypt, Barbary, Libya, and Bill Delgarid, the land of Negroes, Guinea, Ethiopia, and the Abyssinians, that's Ethiopia. Published in 1670. 1670. Let's go in. All right. I'm on page 34. That's the original page, but in this book, it's on 31. All right. I'm going to start here. Many Jews also are scattered over this region. Some natives boasting themselves of Abraham's seed. It's talking about Africa. Let's see the title of Africa. Many Jews also are scattered over this region. What region? Africa. Some natives boasting themselves of Abraham's seed, inhabiting both, si inhabiting both sides the river Niger, or Niger. Others are... Uh, Others are Asian strangers who fled thither either from the desolation of Jerusalem by Vespasian at 70 AD or from Judea, wasted and depopulated by the Romans, Persians, Saracens, that's Muslims, and Christians, or else such as came out of Europe, whence they were banished. So in referring to those Jews, those black Jews that were banished, those Jews that were keeping the commandments that were banished. Not all the all the blacks, but the ones keeping the commandments. Out of some, they were banished where from where? Out of some parts of Italy in the year 1342, out of Spain in the year 1462, out of the Low Countries, that's the Netherlands, in 1350, out of France in 1403 out of England in 1422. These all defer in habit and are divided into several tribes having no dominion, though both wealthy and numerous, but despised of all nations. 
and so abominated by the Turks that they are not admitted to be Mohammedans unless first baptized. And then, other, and then no otherwise made use of than to receive their customs and gather in their taxes. This geographist or a complete system of geography, ancient and modern for Africa. Uh, this is volume four, printed in 1714. Let's go over to page 39. Now I have this book in another format, but it's, the print is so small. Uh, remember, these are reprints. Leo says there are other kingdoms on the southern frontier of this country, talking about Africa, which are inhabited by a rich, industrious, and just sort of people. Judaism was the religion of the ancient Africans for a long time and succeeded by Christianity. But Mohammedanism, Islam, prevailed in the 208th year of the Hegira, when all the Jews, Christians, and professors of the African religion that could be found were put to death. Yet in process of time, their intestine quarrels made them neglect Muhammad's law and revolt from the Caliph of Baghdad, for which they were severely punished by the Mohammedan Caliphs, who caused all their books to be burnt on suspicion that the knowledge of the arts and sciences prompted them to contemn Muhammad's law. Y'all see that? Let's go down to the next highlighted section. Those of Upper Ethiopia worshipped the Lord of Heaven before the Queen of Sheba went to Solomon to be instructed in the law of Moses and the prophets when they embraced Judaism, as did also some of the inhabitants of Lower Ethiopia, who continued in it till they were taught Christianity by the queen of Candace's eunuch, who was baptized by Philip. Okay, let's go over to the side. Some of the Jews who inhabit both sides of the Niger derived themselves from Abraham. Others fled hither from Asia when Vespasian destroyed Jerusalem or from Judea when it was when when it was wa wasted when it was wasted by the romans persians saracens and christians some were banished from italy in 1342 from spain in 1462 from the low countries that's the netherlands in 1350 from france in 1403 and from england in 1422 these all defer, inhabit, and are divided into several wealthy and numerous tribes, but have no dominion, are despised of all nations, uh, and so abominated by the Turks that they are not permitted to be Mohammedans unless first baptized, and then made use of only to receive their customs and gather in their taxes. Wow. They are so, this is page 292, there are so many Jews here who serve as mercenary soldiers and are called by the other Jews in Africa, Karsun, i.e. scripturemen, for they reject traditions. You see that? They are so fond of their own black complexion and so much abhor a white one. It says, they are, so far, they are so fond of their own black complexion and so much abhor a white one that in contempt, they paint the devil white. He observes that they have tried all religions and agree in none. This said, they were first idolaters, then Jews, then Christian. All right. Here you see Spain there. All right. I want you to look at the borders of Africa. There's Arabia. 
Let me just come in closer. All right. There's Somaliland. This is the Horn of Africa. Ethiopia, called Abyssinia at this time. I want you to notice where they got the Jews located at. There's the Falashas there. Look over here, Yemen Jews. That's in Arabia. But I want to focus on Africa. All right. Tababan Jews. A pre exilic Yahwism. That's for those that followed Yahweh. All right. Let's move over. Let's move over. I'm going to go down to the bottom. Look. Loando Jews. This is on the coast of Africa. All right. Mavumbu Jews. Look. This is what I was just showing you in the other books. Santome Jews. Remember the Israelites was, the Jews were cast out of Spain and sent to Santome or St. Thomas. That's that island right there. All right. Look, Levite cities. Where amongst the houses? You know, a lot of you Nigerians, you hate the houses. There's Cameroons. Levite cities over here. This is Nigeria. Night C N I G E R I A. Nigeria. You got Levite cities there. Houses. Levite cities. Levite cities. Beni Ephraim. Sons of Ephraim. Beni means, or Benai means sons of Ephraim. Okay. The Homi. The Homi Jews. Jewish traces all amongst the Ashanti. Judeo-paganism. So these Israelites here were following pagan customs around Cape Verde and Senegambia. The Lam Lam, once a Jewish colony, Timbuktu. Let's go around here. Medieval Jewish kingdom. Jewish kingdom of Ganada. Let me go down. Let me find some of these words. Let me look. Mm, let me go up along the coast. I'm going to follow the coastline. Beni Musa, son of Mo sons of Moses. Now, it's hard for me to see. Y'all know I wear glasses, but if y'all at home, y'all could spot some of this stuff before I do. Berber Jews. Berber Jews. Black Jews. And I want y'all to see this because this is what the so-called scholars put together. The Jews were cast out of Spain. Remember that history I've been showing y'all for a while. My eyesight ain't that good, but I'm just showing y'all this map. So if y'all see something, y'all can freeze screen it. Freeze the screen! <laughs> Israel immigrates here, look at that, to Arabia, that's Arabia right there. Jewish traces, what's that say? Wasambara? Yemen Jews and Falashas Berber, Moorish, and Negro Jews. So the white man knows the blacks are the Israelites. They know that. They keep this stuff hidden from us. All right. The Jews, A Study of Race and Environment by Maurice Fishberg. Published in 19, 1911. All right. I'm going over to page 64. Watch what it says. Pay close attention. Referring to the converted white Jews. Watch what it says. Once I get into focus.
these fair-haired Jews created a problem for anthropologists. It is a question whence these Indo-Germanic Jews, talking about the white Jews, as Virchow, as Virchow called them, have found their way into the midst of a dark complexioned race like the Jews. Do y'all see that? A dark, look at that, a dark complexioned race like the Jews. Wow. These fair-haired Jews created a problem for anthropologists. It is a question whence these Indo-Germanic Jews, talking about these converts, as Virchow called them, have found their way into the midst of a dark complexion race like the Jews. Letting you know the original Jews, the real Jews, are a dark complexioned race. Wow. Is I'm on page 150. Page 150. Watch this. The Jew Negroes at first spoke a corrupted Portuguese combined with Hebrew and native words. You know what? I don't need this one. Oh, I wanted this over here. I'm on page 149. It is stated that the Falashas are not the only Jews of Negro race. Bastion speaks of Negro Jews living on the Loango coast in Western Africa. They are called there Mavambu or Judeos. And these are Bantu. Okay, there's a lot more. Those of us that came to America. So I'm showing you that the real Jews are black. The Jewish Encyclopedia, a descriptive record of the history, religion, literature, and customs of the Jewish people from the earliest times to the present day, prepared by more than 400 scholars and specialists. Let's go down. This is volume four, okay? Published in 1803, 1803. I always tell you, get the old books, the old books, not the new ones, but the old ones. All right, we're going inside. We're looking up uh, the word Khazar. Now, if you notice, they have it spelled with a C here, opposed to a K, but it's the same race, the same people. The Khazars. So let's just go inside and hold on. Let me, let me. Let's go down. All right. Among the classical writers of the Middle Ages, they were known as the Khazars, Khazirs, Akatzirs, and Akatirs and in the Russian Chronicles as Qualisis and Ugri Bayelye. Don't ask me if I'm pronouncing it right, I'm probably not, but y'all can see it for yourselves, all right? Let's move over. I want y'all to, I'm gonna read out loud, y'all read along. In the second half of the 16th century, the Khazars moved westward. They established themselves in the territory bounded by the Sea of Azov the Don and the Lower Volga, the Caspian Sea and the Northern Caucasus. So they lived around the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. The Caucasian Goths, <laughs> uh, Tetraxites, were subjugated by the Khazars, probably about the seventh century. Low, uh, D, this is Russian, I don't speak Russian, sorry. I'm picking up right here with early. Early in that century, the kingdom of the Khazars had become powerful enough to enable the Cajun to send to the Byzantine emperor Heraclius 
an army of 40,000 men by whose aid he conquered the Persians, 626 to 627. Let's move down and let's get to some key points. In 679, the Khazars subjugated the Bulgars and extended their sway farther west between the Don and the Dnieper. Now, the Bulgars are going to find out we're black people, okay? Uh, let me see if I got it in here. Mm, the reason they're going to wear it, you been called the white? Mm, no, I'm describing uh, I'll, I'll cover that another time. But today, well, I don't want to get off topic. All right, let's get back over here. Uh, as the head, you know what? Let me go back. I know I forgot the main part. In 679, the Khazars subjugated the Bulgars and extended their sway farther west between the Don and the Dnieper, as far as the headwaters of the Donets in the province of Labelia. It was probably about that time that the Cajun, for an Cajun bullion of the Khazars, and his grandees, together with a large number of his heathen people, embraced the Jewish religion. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's go down. Let's go down right here, right here. All right. Hmm. Some of the centuries, some centuries ago, King Bullen, that's Cajun Bullen, reigned over the Khazars. To him, God appeared in a dream and promised him might and glory. Encouraged by this dream, Bullen went by the road of Darlin to the country of Ardabil, where he gained great victories over the Arabs. The Byzantine emperor and the caliph of the Ishmaelites, that's the Arabs, sent to him envoys with presents and sages to convert him to their respective religion. So everybody wanted Cajun Bullen and his people on their side. Bullen invited also wise men of Israel. These men of Israel were black men. We're going to show you that. And proceeded to examine them all as each of the champions believed his religion to be the best. Bullen separately questioned the Mohammedans and the Christians as the which of the other two religions they considered the better. When both, get, when both gave preference to that of the Jews, that king perceived that it must be the true religion. He therefore adopted it. You see that? Let's go down. This account of the conversion was considered to be of a legendary nature. Harkavi However, in Bilbasov and whatever that word is, <laughs> proved from Arabic and Slavonian sources that the religious disputation of the Kazarian court is a, his, let's see, is a historical fact. Wow. Let's move over. Watch this. In this letter, Hasdi speaks of the tradition according to which the Khazars once dwelt near the Sierra Mountains. Y'all know the Sierra Mountains. Read uh, Genesis uh, 36. You read about Esau dwelling in the Sierra Mountains. Wow. Now watch this. I've been talking to y'all about Spain for a while. Remember this. Look at this. Many members of the Khazarian royal family immigrated to Spain. Until the 13th century, the Crimea was known to European travelers as Gazaria, the Italian form of Khazaria. So these Edomite converts immigrated to Spain, okay? This was around uh, the fall when we, they conquered us in Spain, when the white man began to take it back. And these so-called white people, these converts, they some assisted us, but most assisted the white Christians. And then in 1492, they began to send us into slavery. These people joined 
with their Christian Caucasian brothers, which is to be expected. Woo! Now that was some good stuff. If I do say so myself, and I do, I do. I really, really do. So what we're going to do now is take a look at a clip from a guy that's called, I think his name is Jake the Muslim Metaphysician, something like that. Anyway, I stumbled across him on YouTube and I found this video that he put together very enlightening regarding the genocide being committed in Gaza today. So what we're going to do is take a look at it, take a good listen to everything that's being said, and I'll be back with my biblical commentary, all right? I have two different videos to show you guys. All right, here we go. This is posted by the Middle East Eye on Twitter. Um, it says, Israeli journalist Shimon Ricklin has stirred up controversy and, and condemnation after supporting war crimes, stating his inability to sleep unless he sees homes in Gaza destroyed. Ricklin referenced the Torah, saying that ancient practices involved spreading salt on the earth. So it's only 31 seconds. It's in Hebrew, uh, but they have English subtitles. And uh, I'm going to read them. Um, I'm going to play it once without reading it, and I'm going to play it a second time and read it as they go along. So here we go. Let's take a listen. <laughs> עוד מגדלים, שלא יהיה להם לאן לחזור. אגב, בתקופת התנ״ך גם היו זורים את האדמה במלח. הם צריכים לזכור עם עמלק. הם צריכים לזכור את זה להרבה מאוד זמן. אי אפשר להגיע לאיזה הסדר מיד. סליחה, זה רק אני. זה פשעה מלחמה. Completely disgusting, but I'm going to play it again, because for those people who are not able to look at their screen and read along, some people are just listening. Let me play it again, and I'm going to read what the translation says. So listen to what this... Zionist scumbag says. <laughs> he says, I am for war crimes. He is for war crimes. He wants war crimes to happen. Imagine that. Imagine I went on one of these programs and said, I want war crimes. I love when Hamas or any other group commits war crimes. Imagine I said something like that, right? And this guy, of course, gets away with it. I am for war crimes. He is for war crimes and is professional, supposed to be a professional Israeli journalist. I am for war crimes, he says. <laughs> he says, I don't care if I am criticized. He knows that he's going to face criticism and he says he doesn't care if he gets criticized. He's for war crimes and he's proud of it. He doesn't care if he faces criticism. <laughs> he says, honestly, I don't care. And then he says, I am unable to sleep if I do not see houses being destroyed in Gaza. This sick person, Shimon, Shimon, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name, Ricklin. This sick person says he cannot sleep unless he sees houses being destroyed in Gaza. He wants complete destruction and death for the people of Gaza. He cannot sleep at night unless he sees that. He's so happy. This is how sick this person is. And then he says, what should I say? What do I say? He says, more houses, more buildings, I want to see more of them destroyed. He wants more houses, more buildings destroyed. He can't sleep at night unless he sees it. And he wants more war crimes. He says, I want there to be nothing for them to return to. He wants there to be nothing for the people of Gaza to return to. He wants complete destruction, nothing for them to return to, so that they'll have to leave. This is what he wants. He wants either them to be killed or for there to be complete destruction and for there to be ethnic cleansing for all of them, just like the second Nakba, 
right, <clears throat> for all of them to, to leave Palestine. And then he quotes the Torah or the Jewish scripture, the Bible, in order to justify his position. He says in the Torah, it says they use... <laughs> says to, to spread the earth with salt and they must complain he wants the people of Palestine to complain he says this is why we cannot reach a solution with them and that is why war crimes and, and that's what he wants the war crime wants more war crimes right this is what this guy is saying live on television right on, on major news networks. Imagine if we went and said that, that we want this. The guy cannot sleep unless he sees more death, chaos, and destruction. This is a sick individual. Absolutely disgusting. Okay? Now let me share my screen, and you guys can watch the second video, and it's not even, it's not any better. Um, from another supposed professional Israeli journalists. So it says here again, posted by Middle East Eye, Israeli journalists, and I'm not sure how to pronounce his name, so I'm not even going to try. Channel 13's Arab affairs correspondent says the Israeli army should have killed 100,000 Palestinians early on in the war. So it's not enough that they killed 20,000 or more Palestinians over the past few couple months. He says that they should have immediately after October 7th, immediately should have killed 100,000 Palestinians. And he's not referring to members of Hamas because there aren't even, according to estimates, there aren't even 100,000 members of Hamas, right? So he's referring to general Palestinian civilians. Of course, I'm sure he wants to kill members of Hamas, but he's not limiting it to that. He wanted to kill 100,000 members of uh, I'm sorry, 100,000 Palestinians as soon as October 7th happened. So he's saying the IDF and the Israeli government haven't done enough killing. So let's, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to play the video. It's in Hebrew, I believe, and the English translations on their bottom are just, are just going to let it play through. And then I'm going to play it again a second time and read it and comment as we go along, inshallah. <laughs> בהתחלה, כן, יש אנשי חמאס, יש עוד עשרים אלף אנשי חמאס. אתה יודע שהמאה אלף האלה זה לא היו מאה אלף אנשי חמאס. אני לא יודע מה זה מעורבים ולא מעורבים וחפים מפשע מחפים אתה באמת רוצה להרוג מאה אלף עזתים? ברגע שהרגו לי אלף ארבע מאות בני אדם, הייתי צריך להנחית על עזה מכה כואבת כזו, כמו בעופות דורסים בתחילת עופרת יצוקה. לא, לא, שם נהרגו עשרות שוטרים. אני אומר, לא אמרתי שזה במספרים. אבל מאה אלף עזתים, צביקה, אתה עומד לך הדבר הזה? שנייה רגע, אני חושב על זה. מה, אתה חושב? אני חושב. הרגו לך אלף ארבע מאות, היית יכול לצאת למבצע צבאי, ואתה יודע מה, אני לא יודע גם לכמה תגיע בסוף. בהתחלה תגיע למספרים, ואחר כך תלך לעניין של הפסקת אש והפסקת חטופים. דיברתי בהקשר של מכה. מכה Okay, so for you guys who are just listening and weren't able to follow along with the subtitles on the bottom, and I'm going to play it again and read out exactly what he's saying. He says, in my opinion, the IDF should have launched a more fatal attack. So they're killing that they've done 20,000 plus is not enough. With 100,000 killed in the beginning. Yes. Yes, he wanted as soon as it happened, 100,000 Palestinians should be killed. That's what he's saying. And then he says, yes, there are... He said there are Hamas members. He even says there are about 20,000 members of Hamas, according to him. So he knows that, but he wants 100,000 to be killed. He doesn't care. It doesn't have to be Hamas. He wants 100,000 people in Palestine to be killed. Palestinian people. And then he says, I don't know who was involved. I don't know who's innocent. And the guy says to him, do you really want to kill 100,000 people? 
And of course, he's saying, yes, the moment uh, 1,400 people were killed, we should, meaning Israel and the IDF, have launched such a fatal attack like in Operation Cast Lead in 2008 at the beginning of the massacre. He said, no, no, tens of Palestinian policemen were killed there. And the guy is saying to him, really? You want to kill 100,000 Palestinians? He said, wait a second, that's not that's my opinion, not yours. He's he's owning it. He wants to kill. He said we should have killed 100,000 Palestinian civilians immediately. He said 1,400 people were killed, even though that's not accurate. Even the IDF now is reporting lower numbers, right? In, in a military option. And you know what? He says, I don't even know. He says, at the beginning, you'll get to those numbers, and then you'll get to a ceasefire. And hostages released. He says, you need to be more fatal than the attack we saw. Which, which obviously, what the IDF in Israel has been doing is much more fatal than anything that Hamas did on October the 7th in terms of the raw numbers. They've killed more than 20,000 uh, Palestinians, right? Most of which, even by their own admission, are not Hamas, not members of Hamas. And this guy doesn't care. He doesn't care if they're Hamas or just average Palestinian civilians. He wants 100,000 people as soon as October 7th happened. On October 8th, IDF should have launched a bomb and an attack to kill 100,000 plus Palestinians, innocent Palestinians. That's what this guy, this Israeli journalist, is saying right there on live TV. How is he still able to have a job? How is he not in prison for what he's saying? How is it the case that the guy before said he can't go to sleep without seeing more and more and more destruction and killing? How is it the case that that same guy said he wants more war crimes? He prays for war crimes. How is it that these Zionists are able to go on these networks and say that they want war crimes and they want 100,000 100, innocent Palestinians to be killed and they don't care and they double and triple down on it? Now, that was some heavy, heavy stuff that Jake brought out. Now, I hope you all heard for yourselves the glee in the voices of the Khazars, which are Edomites, uh, how happy they were in proclaiming that they want the deliberate destruction and genocide upon the modern day Palestinians. You heard it for yourself. I'm not putting nothing in nobody's mouth. You heard it, you saw it, you read it. Okay, so the the guy asked some interesting questions. He asked, uh, how are these guys able to have a job? How are they able to go on national television? How are they able to go on major networks? Proclaim and laugh about genocide and not go to prison and or be terminated. I want all of y'all to think about that. That's Job chapter 9 and verse 24. Watch this. Y'all know it. Job 9, 24, and it reads, The earth is given into the hands of the wicked. God is letting us know that the wicked ruled the earth. This is why they can go on national television and proclaim they want the genocide of Palestinians. This is why they can go on major news networks and proclaim the genocide of Palestinians and not be terminated, not be imprisoned or incarcerated. This is why they can get away with that. Let you or I say something like that on national television.
Watch what happens. Back to Job 9.24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. So who rules the world? The wicked. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. What does that mean? He covers the faces of the judges thereof. The judges of the earth are God, Christ, the angels, the Israelites. How have they covered our faces up? They, when you look for God in the earth, whose face do you see? The so-called white man. Mm-hmm. These Khazars, these Edomites. When you look for Jesus in the earth, who do you see proclaiming themselves as Jesus the Christ? These so-called white people. Remember, Caesar Borgia, the second son of Pope Alexander VI of Rome, posed as this new Renaissance image of Jesus. I ain't lying. I ain't lying. I got the book. Here's the book. Let's read the bottom. And it reads, a base relief of the Madonna and child posed for, notice it says posed for, by Rosa Venosa and her infant Valentino, later called Caesar Borgia, of which Alexander VI was the acknowledged father. So Caesar Borgia as an infant posed for the Madonna and child. His mother played the role of Mary and he was the infant Jesus Christ. Let's take a look. Take a look. I lie not. Let's go to the next one. Okay, let's get him grown up. All right, a rare etching of Caesar Borgia, firstborn son of Alexander the Sixth. Now, some books say he was the second son because Alexander the Sixth had a lot of illegitimate kids. So let, let's take a look. This is Caesar Borgia. You all can see it. That's Caesar Borgia. Okay. Let's go to the next image, which is a bust. Bust of the Savior posed for by Caesar Borgia. Let's take a look at the Savior. This is supposed to be Christ. He posed for this. He posed as the Savior. Let's go back. Bust of the Savior posed for by Caesar Borgia. It was removed from the Church of San Salvatore in Termas, now destroyed, to the monumental morgue of St. Louis Church, where it may still be seen and is shown by the guide as the bust of the relative of a famous pope. Yeah, Pope Alexander VI of Rome. Let's go to the next bust. Let's read what it says. The original of this bust was found in the Church of San Salvatore in Termas, now destroyed. It is an open secret that Caesar Borgia, the son of Pope Alexander, had posed for it. Let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at what Caesar posed for. Look at the crown of thorns on his head. Who is he supposed to be? Who is he posing to be? Christ the Savior. Jesus Christ the Savior. That's who he posed to be. <laughs> Let's go back. The original of this bus was found in the church of San Salvatore in Termas, now destroyed. It is an open secret that Caesar Borgia, the son of Pope Alexander, had posed for it. Upon the demolition of the church, the bus disappeared until it was rediscovered on the walls of penitentiary of Civita Castellana near Rome. Y'all see that? Caesar Borgia posed for the new image of Jesus Christ, the image of the beast. When you look for the Israelites, now come on, come on back home. When you look for the Israelites, who do you see proclaiming themselves as the Israelites, God's chosen people? These Khazars that you see in Israel today, which are nothing but Edomites, that's what they truly are. Edomites, killing unrelentlessly Civilian men, women, children, babies. Why? So that they can have the land to further push the lie that they are the Israelites. Look at movies of Moses, 
What do you see? Kazos as Moses. Charlton Heston portrayed as Moses. Jesus Christ. Passion of the Christ uh, by Mel Gibson. You see a uh, uh, white guy as Jesus. The Israelites, all white people. You can't make this stuff. That's what it means. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. Even the angels. Look for angels. Images of angels. You see white folks everywhere. They're the angels. If not, where and who is it? You might think that I'm lying. But it's God that has allowed this to happen because of our sins. And if not, then where and who is he? Hmm? 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 Ask yourselves the question. Now, as we continue, one of the things I want you all to take notice of on why this lie that they are the people of Israel, that they are the Jews, keeps being pushed. Why? Oh, oh, which goes back to what the guy Jake said. He asked the question, he asked the question, how are they able to keep a job and not be incarcerated for the things they say and the things that they do? As long as you push the lie that they are the people of God, they can do no wrong. That's right. I said it. They can do no wrong. Now, the term Zionist, what does it mean? What does the words, because everyone, like in the video, Jake was calling them Zionists. When you look up Zionists, here's the meaning. Look at it. Here's the modern definition. One, a supporter of Zionism, a person who believes in the development and protection of a Jewish nation in what is now Israel. Second definition, in South Africa, a member of any of a group of independent churches which practice a form of Christianity incorporating elements of traditional African beliefs. Okay, but it's that first one that the world uses. Someone, a person who believes in the development and protection of a Jewish nation in what is now Israel. Zion, what is the root of the word Zion? When you look up Zion in the Bible, it's sometimes transliterated as Zion with an S, S-I-O-N. In the Hebrew, they have a T-Z-I-O-N or T-S-I-O-N. It's a place or name, okay, in the Hebrew scriptures, often used as a synonym for Jerusalem, as well as for the land, as well as the people of Jerusalem. Let me give you a biblical example. Come with me to 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 7, and it reads, Nevertheless, David, referring to King David, took the stronghold of Zion. The same is the city of David. You heard that, right? Zion is the city of David. Let's go to 1 Kings. In 1 Kings chapter 8, it gives a little more detail that I want you all to see. 1 Kings chapter 8 and verse 1. And it reads, Then Solomon, referring to King Solomon, assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the chief of the fathers of the children of Israel, unto King Solomon in Jerusalem. Where? In Jerusalem that they might bring up the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of the city of David, which is Zion. Do you see that? Zion is the city of David, is Jerusalem. Now, I'm going to show you some people now. Psalm 78. Let's go to Psalm 78, verse 68. But chose the tribe of Judah, the Mount Zion, which he loved. Do y'all see that? It's calling the tribe of Judah the Mount Zion. It's calling the tribe of Judah Zion. Do y'all see that right there? I hope everybody sees that. So Judah, not Zoo, I'm sorry. So Zion refers to Jerusalem as well as the tribe of Judah. I hope y'all understand that. Now, watch this. Let's go to Zechariah chapter 2, verse 6. I'm going to start there. Ho, ho, come forth and flee from the land of the north. 
What is the land of the north? Write this down. North America. What is the land of the north? North America. Let's read on. Say of the Lord. For I have spread you abroad as the four winds of the heaven, saith the Lord. Verse 7. Deliver thyself, O Zion. Who Zion? Remember, the tribe of Judah. Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwellest with the daughter of Babylon. Woo! It says that Judah, which is Zion, would dwell with the daughter of Babylon. What does it mean, the daughter of Babylon? Who is the daughter of Babylon? Well, in order to find that out, let's go to Psalms 137, verse 7 and 8. Watch this. Psalms 137, verse 7. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom. Who are we talking about? Edom, E-D-O-M, which means what? Red. Red people because the blood shows through their skin. Let's make it plain for you. Caucasians, that's who it is, the Caucasian race. Let's read it again, verse 7. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem who said, race it, that means destroy it. Race it, that means destroy it, even to the foundation thereof. Verse 8, O daughter of Babylon, who ought to be destroyed. You, you hear what David's calling Edom? The daughter of Babylon, who ought to be destroyed. That's prophecy that's going, that has not happened yet. O daughter of Babylon, who art, meaning who will be, destroyed. Happy shall he be that rewarded thee as thou hast served us. So when we go back to Zechariah 2, verse 7, and it reads, Deliver thyself, O Zion. Who Zion? Tribe of Judah. Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwellest with the daughter of Babylon. Where? Verse 6 says, Ho, ho, come forth and flee from the land of the north. What's the land of the north? North America. So the real Jews, the real Israelites, especially of the tribe of Judah, a portion of them would be in the land of the north, North America. With who? With who? The daughter of Babylon. Who's that? Edomites, the children of Edom. I hope y'all got that. I hope y'all got that. So I said all that to let you know that wording is very important. As long as you refer to white people, these Edomites, as Zion or Zionists, because it's all spiritual. It's all a form of witchcraft, how to cast spells through the use of words. You're using words about the people of God, Zion, as we're discussing right now, but you're putting it on the wicked. You're calling the wicked the people of God. You're calling the wicked Judah. So that's why in the eyes of the world, they can do no wrong. Because as long as you think these people are the people of God, they can do whatever they want. God is with them. But when you start to realize no, that's not the people of God. They're the wicked the Bible speaks of. They're the Edomites. Hmm? They're the sons and daughters of Satan. I know, I know. Oh, you're being mean. You're being racist. No, I'm not. Revelation chapter 2, verse 9. This is Jesus speaking. Watch what he says. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty. So Christ is speaking to the real Jews the real Israelites. He says again, I know thy works. Our people put in a lot of work in this world and tribulation. Our people catch hell in this world and poverty. The masses of our people are in poverty, but thou art rich. Meaning when we repent, all the promises in this Bible only pertain to us. Let's read on. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not but are the synagogue of Satan. So when I say that these Jewish people or these white people, these Edomites, these so-called Zionists, because they're not Zionists, they're not Jewish, these people that have attributed to themselves those labels, when I call them the sons and daughters of Satan, I'm not saying it because I have any race, racist or hateful agenda. I'm saying it because the son of God called them the synagogue of Satan. The son of God said that. The Messiah said that. 
The King of Kings said that. The Lord of Lords said that. That's what all of you need to get in your minds. Now, the guy, Jake Metaphysician, forgive me if I mispronounced it. <laughs> he said, well, he was quoting from the, the white guy, the Edomite, that said he can't sleep. These people can't sleep unless they commit some type of genocide. Woo! Now, that was a heavy, heavy statement. Now, is it biblical? Let's go to the book of Proverbs. Now, before we get to Proverbs, I want to go to the book of Malachi just to substantiate and solidify the fact, the truth that Esau, Edom, the Edomites are the wicked. Let's go to Malachi chapter 1. And let's start at verse 1. So we're going here to establish who is the wicked. Now, I want to stress the wicked because right now a lot of you Christians go, well, everybody's wicked in some form or another. Okay. Everybody at one time or another has done something that somebody else would claim is wicked. Okay. I'll give you that. But there is a major wicked in the earth that God speaks of. There is the wicked that God speaks of. Let's see who it is. Let's go to Malachi chapter one. Let's start at verse one. The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. Verse two, I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Response, was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord? Yet I loved Jacob. Verse three, and I hated Esau. Who was Esau? the father of the Edomites, the father of all Caucasians. Verse three again. And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. When did that happen? During the dark ages when Rome fell and we pushed them into the Caucasus mountains of Georgia, Russia. Verse four. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished. Because in the Caucasus Mountains, yes, they were impoverished. Verse 4 again. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return. When did they return? During the Renaissance. What does the word Renaissance mean? Rebirth. Rebirth of what? Rebirth of the Caucasians in power in this earth. Verse four again, whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down and they shall call them the border of wickedness, the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. For how long? Forever. <laughs> Notice it calls them wicked, and it says, and the people, not person, the people, because a lot of times, like, let's talk about so-called over there in Israel today. Everyone points their fingers at Netanyahu. It's not just Netanyahu that's wicked. All of them, God says, the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. The people includes Men, women, and their children. Do y'all see that? Do you understand that? I know your church has never taught you that. I'm making it plain as I can for you. Now, back to what, so I wanted to prove who the wicked is in the Bible. Okay, it's Edom, the Edomites. Okay, that goes with Job chapter 9, verse 24 that we read earlier. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Who runs the earth? Who rules the earth? Who reigns over the earth? It ain't the Africans. It ain't the Arabs. It ain't the Chinese. It's the Caucasians, starting with the United States of America, followed by Great Britain, France, Germany, Russia, Canada, Australia, Poland, Czechoslovakia. I hope y'all understand. 
I hope none of you are confused. I hope you understand everything that's being said. Now, from there, back to what the guy Jake, the Muslim metaphysician, said. He said, not he didn't say it. The 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 Edomite in the video on film was saying that they can't sleep unless they commit genocide. And the question is, is that biblical? Let's go to Proverbs chapter four. Let's start at verse four. Enter not into the path of the wicked. Who's the wicked, brothers and sisters? Who's the wicked? That's right, Edomites. Say it again, Edomites. One more time, Edomites. Who are they? Caucasians. Who are they? Caucasians. Enter not into the path of the wicked and go not in the way of evil men. Verse 15. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it and pass away. Verse 16. For they sleep not except they have done mischief and their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. Do you hear what God is saying here? Look at verse 16 again. For they sleep not except they have done mischief and their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. So when the the guy in the video said they can't sleep unless they commit genocide, meaning they can't sleep unless they do some evil, some wickedness in the earth. He meant it. And God has told us that in the Holy Bible. Believe it. Believe it. Ooh, verse 17 again. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. That's their sustenance. Their sustenance is wickedness and violence. Do y'all see that? Watch this. Let's go to Psalms. Psalms 140 and verse 1. A Psalm of David, it reads, Deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man. Preserve me from the violent man. Who's the evil man? Who's the violent man, brothers and sisters? Edom. Esau, Edom. Let's say it again. Edom. Esau, Edom. Who are they? Caucasians. Who? Caucasians. Caucasians. Verse 1 again, deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man. Preserve me from the violent man, which imagine mischiefs in their heart. Continually, how long? Continually are they gathered together for war. For what? For war. What's happening over there in Gaza? War. 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 Verse 3, they have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. What does it mean? Poison. A serpent has venom, poison. That's why they can say genocidal remarks, laugh about it, be joyful about it, not lose their jobs, not be incarcerated, not be imprisoned. Nothing happens to them. Verse three again. They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. Adder's poison is under their lips. What? Evil, poison is under their lips. Silah, silah means amen. It is true. What are we reading? The Holy Bible. What? The Holy Bible. Verse four. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Who's the wicked? Caucasians, Edom. Preserve me from the violent man. Who's the violent man? Caucasians, Edom, who have purposed to overthrow my goings. Their whole life. Their purpose is to overthrow the children of Israel, which is our people. I hope you all understand that. That's their whole purpose. Verse five, the proud have hit a snare for me in cords. They have spread a net by the wayside, meaning traps. They have set gins for me. Selah. Now, you may say, well, who's the proud there? Well, it's still Edom, and I'm going to show you that. Let's go to Obadiah real quick. Obadiah verse 1, the vision of Obadiah, thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom. Concerning who? Edom. E-D-O-M. What does it mean? 
red, red people. Why? Because the blood shows through their skin. So who are they today? Caucasians, Caucasians. We have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. Verse 2. But I've made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. Look at Israel in the so-called Middle East. They are small amongst the heathen nations around them. They are greatly despised. Look at verse 3. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. Now, that's the part I wanted to get to. Edom is a proud people, prideful in a negative context, not in a positive context. That, watch what it says, verse 3 again. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock. What does that mean? They used to dwell in the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. They used to dwell in the mountains of Mount Seir in Genesis 36. Whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, his, watch this, who shall bring me down to the ground? What does that mean? Who shall bring me down to the ground? Who can conquer me? In order to say who can bring me down to the ground, that means you got to have what? Power. Power. You must have technological power. Do Caucasians have technological power today? You better believe it. You better believe it. Verse 4. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle. What's the symbol of the American white man? The eagle. What do they do with their technology? They have given it to Caucasians in the land of Israel. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though, though thou hast set thy nest among the stars. Do these Caucasians do space travel? Did they land on the moon first in 1969 and say the eagle has landed? Yes, they did. Thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. So the Lord has promised to bring them down. So now I read all that. To, let's go back to Psalms 140 and verse 5, where it says, the proud have hid a snare for me. Who's the proud? Remember what we read, just read in Obadiah regarding Edom. It says, the pride of thy heart has deceived thee. Y'all understand? It's talking about the Edomites. Verse 5 again, the proud have hid a snare for me. And cords, they have spread a net by the wayside. They have set gins for me, meaning traps, traps, mo traps, silah. Now we can get into the snares and cords and nets that they and gins that they have set aside. Now there are political traps they have set out there for our people to be snared in, and there are religious traps out there that they have laid for us. Okay, like in religious traps. All of these traps, they have us trapped up in their religions of white supremacy. I'll put it that way, where we honor and celebrate things like Christmas, Mother's Day, New Year's Eve, Valentine's Day, days that God did not command us to keep. Mm -hmm. They have traps, political traps, dealing with the welfare system, where they have divided the woman from the man, the Black woman from the black man, a Latin woman from the Latin man, saying, we will give you subsidies, we will give you public housing, we will give you welfare, but there cannot be a man in your house. You cannot deal with a man. This is what they have done. And then there's a note that they have a sub note that says, if a woman has X amount of children, the more children she has, she'll get more money. So now women just pop out these babies and now they get more subsidies from the government but meanwhile, there's no steady man in the household. And his children are raised fatherless. What does that promote? Crime. What does that promote? Crime. Poverty plus no father figure in the house equals crime. I'm telling you straight. Now, I know you may find that one family where it didn't happen. But in the vast majority of the cities, that's what happens. Even on the reservations. Okay where they put alcohol, like they do in the ghetto, alcohol, woman from the man, separate them, divide them, okay? So that's just examples, all right? So we're in verse 6, Proverbs, I mean, Psalms 140, verse 6. I said unto the Lord, thou art my God, hear the voice of my supplications, O Lord. Verse 7, O God, the Lord, the strength of my salvation, 
Thou hast covered my head in the day of battle. Verse 8. Grant not, O Lord, the desires of the wicked. So this, this is a prayer. Don't let the wicked's desires come to pass. Verse 8 again. Grant not, O Lord, the desires of the wicked. Further not his wicked device, lest they exalt themselves. Selah. Verse 9. As for the head of those that compass me about, let the mischief of their own lips cover them. So when they rejoice about genocide and destruction, let their own evil of their lips fall upon themselves. Let's read that again. Verse 9. As for the head of those that compass me about, let the mischief of their own lips cover them. Verse 10. Let burning coals fall upon them. What is this talking about? Destruction. Annihilation. Armageddon. Verse 10, let burning coals fall upon them. Let them be cast into the fire, into deep pits that they rise not up again. Do you hear this prophecy? Verse 11, let not an evil speaker be established in the earth. Now, we saw several evil speakers on today's commentary clip. They rejoiced and promoted genocide. They rejoiced and promoted the deaths of civilian men, women, children, and babies. Verse 11, let not an evil speaker be established in the earth. Evil shall hunt the violent man to overthrow him. You hear that part right there? Evil shall hunt the violent man to overthrow him. So evil's going to follow this white man. Evil's going to follow these Edomites. Let me word it like that, these Edomites. Okay, let's read on. Verse 12, I know that the Lord will maintain the cause of the afflicted and the right of the poor. Now, you might be saying, well, anybody is the afflicted. Well, let's see. Psalms 129, verse 1. Many a time have they afflicted me from my youth, may Israel now say. Many a time have they afflicted me from my youth, yet they have not prevailed against me. So who's the afflicted? True Israel, us, our people, we are the afflicted, okay? Now, who's the poor? Who's the poor? Let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 32, to explain the poor. What shall one then answer the messengers of the nation? That the Lord has founded Zion, that's, there you go, that word Zion again, and the poor of his people shall trust in it. You, hear, you see that? Who's the poor? Zion. You see that? Who's that? Judah first and foremost, followed by the other tribes. Do y'all see that right there? So the afflicted are referring to the Israelites. The poor is referring to the Israelites. That's why Christ said, blessed are the poor in spirit. Why are we poor in spirit? Because we lost our identity, our nationality, our language, our culture, our land. We've lost everything. We've lost self-respect. We've lost our dignity. We've lost our wives and children, our families. Now we're waking up to regain all the things that we have lost. So again, who's the afflicted? Israel. Who's the poor? Israel. Back to Psalms 140 and verse 12 again. I know that the Lord will maintain the cause of the afflicted and the right of the poor. See that? Verse 13. Surely the righteous shall give thanks unto thy name. Now, your next door might be anybody can be righteous. No. In Isaiah 60 and verse 21, regarding the Israelites, it says, Thy people also shall be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever, the branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. A little one shall become a thousand and a small one a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. So when we return to the land, the Bible says we shall be all righteous. Y'all see that? So when we go back to Psalms 140 and 13, and it reads, Surely the righteous shall give thanks unto thy name. The upright shall dwell in thy presence. It's referring to the children of Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel. I hope you all understand that. 
And I hope you all glean something from today's lesson. So with that, let's get to the reading of the shout out letters and donations. All right. Let's get to the reading of the shout out letters, shall we? This first one reads, Dear Bishop Nathaniel and family, I just have a few words. I want to thank you for all the prayers and blessings that came. I was blessed with a beautiful car that now I can go sometimes in fellowship. In one of your classes, you mentioned with the older members that we should visit at least once a month. And I would like to do that here in Colorado. I'm raising my grandson that is 12 years old, going on 13. He's a good boy and I homeschool him. Just want to thank you all so much. Most of all, I do thank the Most High in Christ. Be blessed and stay strong. Love you all. Sister Adderley, a.k.a. Dorothy. All praises. This next one reads, Shalom, beloved Bishop. Most High in Christ, bless. Uh, what does this say? Something always. See it. Jediah. Jediah. JJ. All praise. Thank you, sis. All right, this next one says, Shalom, Most High in Christ, bless. Obispo Nathaniel in Spanish. Ha <laughs> ha! I'm sending alms on the behalf of the land fund. Also sending blessings upon you and your household as well for your endeavors in leading the army of God and the nation of Israel via the laws of God in Christ Yeshua. May your soul be bound in a bundle of life with the Lord thy God and the souls of thine enemies. Them shall he... Them shall he, I think that says sling out, as out of the middle of a sling, 1 Samuel 25, 29. Sincerely, the reserved, Reuel Kadash. Yashallah, all praises. All right, this next one reads, Shalom, brothers. I'm from the Tampa camp, Marsha. Here is my alms to you. Please pray for my family, and I will continue to be patient with them. I always pray and read and apply daily. Shalom and peace to the brethren. Marsha, Lake Vista. And that you're in Auburn. Okay, all praises. This next one says, Shalom, Bishop Most High, in the name of his son Christ, bless you and all bishops, deacons, captains, officers, and the congregations of IUIC. Thank you all for the teachings of the Most High in Christ. The Lord continually bless me and keep you all. From Donovan S. Thank you, Donovan. This next one says, I hope this letter will find you all well. I just want to thank you for being here for all the children of Israel. Thank you again, Dorothy W. Thank you, Dorothy. This next one is from L. Kassan. L, last name Kassan. Bishop Nathaniel, I don't have words to express how I feel in my heart for you and the guys and the, it's in script, so y'all bear with me, it's in script. And the something you all are doing for the Most High. Keep up the good work. I am praying for you all and your families that the Most High will keep you all and your families. Going out and coming in daily. I thank the Most High for you all and for the classes and all that, and all that, that's how the Most High are keeping all you all are doing. Thanks for the high holy days on the, on the, on the, hmm, and the events too. I hope my brothers and sisters of IUIC, I'm grateful that the Most High raised you up to do a work for Him. Knowing that we are, hmm, we are living in the last days. I know that the Most High is coming back. I don't mind supporting you all. The Most High knows what He's doing because these so called preachers don't know. And all they want is all they want is the money, and I don't know, the, and and don't know the truth. 
I don't want to and don't want to know the truth. I'm so glad I'm in the truth. Love you all and the most high most high's words is right. We must continue to seek the most high with our whole heart. So just keep keeping no matter what. The most high is keeping you all in his big hands because no it says be encouraged most high in Christ bless uh let's see this is from sister El Kassan thank you thank you thank you uh, you have to excuse my reading the script I'm having difficulty reading the script just be patient with me all right y'all this next letter reads sir part of my handwriting I pray that you and your family and those also of IUIC leadership and their families are well, strong and persistent in faith, truth, and spirit. Please accept this free will offering for the growth of our nation if it were not for the Holy Spirit. After witnessing, viewing the videos and congregating with the Philadelphia camp, I'd still be searching for the real truth. Most High in Christ, bless. All praises to the Most High. Thank you, a soldier. This is from a soldier. Well, thank you, a soldier. This next one reads, Most High in Christ, bless you all. My brothers, keep up the good fight. Much love, V. Cameron. V. Cameron, thank you. All praises. This next one says, To the prophets, thank you so much for waking up Israel, and thank you for sharing the truth with us. Traveling around the world have helped us a lot uh, of our people that didn't know God. Keep up the good work. Thanks to the Most High. Barbara S. Thank you, Barbara. All praises. This next one says, Shalom, dear Bishop Nathaniel. Thank you for sharing this truth with us. I love the cooking show and the sisters' stations. All praises. Use this donation. Love you all. Please pray for me. Uh, This, your initial is, I think that's a big L. Big L. All praises. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sis. This next one says, Dear Leadership, Shalom, I give the most high all praises for the powerful and beautiful truth you brothers teach. Our people need this mighty truth taught to them. I'm so happy to have found you brothers. This truth has set my, uh, my, my aunt and I free. Not like the Christian church, but real freedom. Keep teaching the mighty truth of the Most High. Stay strong in the Lord and don't give up no matter what. This is from Sister Lisa S. Thank you, Sister Lisa. I see your number there. I'll have somebody reach out to you. All praises. I want to give a shout out of thanks to... This is R. Initials are R-O, I believe it is. Thank you for the land. I want to give a shout out of thanks to Sister Sharon E.H., Sister Dolores O., um, I believe that's C. Phillips, B.R., thank you, thank you so much, uh, B.R. again, L.C.J., thank you, Patricia W., thank you, Adderley, Adderley also known as Dorothy, thank you. Sister Elisheba, Charlotte D. Charlotte, is that a D or an O? Charlotte, I think that's a D. Charlotte D again. Shout out to Sister JJ, thank you. Shout out to DH, that's your initials I see. JJ again. Anthony JI, Sister Sheila W. R. G, thank you so much. RG again. Shout out and give thanks to hmm, Ronald, Brother Ronald. Thank you so much, Brother Ronald. I'm going to have Deacon Isaac reach out to you. All praises. Shout out of thanks to you. And shout out to Laura N. Shout out to Marsha P. Shout out to D. McGee. Shout out to Gwen R. Shout out to Gwen R again and Gwen R again. Shout out to Gwen R again. Shout out to E. Reed. Shout out to Donovan S. 
Shout out to Edmund P. and Kara P. Shout out to K. Jones. Shout out to Darren M. Shout out to Michelle B. Shout out to Michelle B. again. Shout out to Dorothy W. Shout out to Leona C. Shout out to Jonathan D.R. of Pennsylvania. Shout out to Brinkley S. Shout out to Angel S. Shout out to Raleigh M. Shout out to Lennox B. Shout out to Charlie W. Jr. Shout out to V. Cameron. Shout out to the Brooks Company. Shout out to, I think that's B. Sanders. Shout out to L. It's a big L there. That's all it says with a P.O. box. Okay. Shout out to Lisa M.S. Thank you. You know, similar money order. I'm thinking it's the same person, but I'm not sure. Lisa M.S. And the other one has a big L and that's it. Shout out to James G.F. Jr. Well, brothers, well, sisters, you know how I love to say, let's all of us, please still stay healthy. Let's stay faithful. Let's stay focused. But most of all, let's all of us stay in the spirit. Most high in Christ, blessed. Love you all. Shalom.